this hug of play, you know, so I just hold it, hold your ears if you're sensitive. Don't <laughs> your floor can't take I have raving and heat in the floor. Oh, no. <laughs> a cement floor is wonderful. It just is wonderful. And then sometimes if I'm feeling, I'll do that. But, oh, no. So somebody told me, huh? oh, somebody told me how to be a millionaire. His name is Lou, and he was an art student at Austin State University. And in 1980-something, <clears throat> I just got the desire to make miniatures. And so I uh, was making miniatures and selling them for a dollar each. And Lou came in one day, and he goes, I know how you can be a millionaire. And I said, yeah? He goes, make a million of those. <laughs> so I'm like, OK. So, many years ago, um, a potter friend of mine, Chick Lloyd, he, he used a half a clothespin, and I, I use a half a clothespin. He just came to New York and had the studio. I started teaching for Dennis, <laughs> and I gave everybody a clothespin, and he's like, you know I sell wooden tools. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, none of them look like half a clothespin. Then you should sell clothespins. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You should sell clothespins. So I have, over the years, been given clothespins. A half a clothespin lasts me about six years. <laughs> I have enough clothespins for many, many hundreds of years. More than two inches. <laughs> yeah, more than those, those two inches. Yeah, I mean, it's not even quite two inches. <laughs> it's 1.8. So I throw my miniatures off the hump. And I'm such a ham. I mean, even though, I mean, Fred, I'm so glad you asked that question about studio, because I am such a ham about throwing. I love, I love to demonstrate to children. And uh, at Renegers, kids will come by, and I can put them on the wheel. And I just delight in that. Would I want children in my studio every day? No. But um, it's wonderful. So this is throwing off the hump. And I just center the clay roughly. It doesn't matter whether the bottom is, because my eye is going to this small portion that I brought up. So I just bring this here. And I, and I know this is hard to see. So there's the bottom of my pot and the top. Everybody's so quiet. I'm not used to potters being quiet. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit about selling your work, Barbara? Oh, yes. It's so much fun when people say they want it. Uh, I love it. And I really have gotten into I'm such a ham, too, about selling things. I will tell everybody about my salters. I talk to them about functional pots. I tell them they're microwave safe, oven proof, and dishwasher. Good. <laughs> you know, I tell them that, you know, I make most of my glazes. I talk about spodumene and flint. And, and I just go on and on and on, and then they finally buy a pot. Because I want to stop. <laughs> but I, I, keep my, I keep my prices low. Uh, and that's simply because it's my choice. I know my mentor, Cynthia, she gets a decent, a good price for her work. And there is that philosophy. But I want people, when they buy a bowl from me for $20, I want them to use it. I want them it used. Now, if my price was $45 on that same bowl, it'd be on a shelf. And I want them to break it and buy another one. You know? <laughs> so, and I have figured out my expenses you know, how much it costs. Um, I do like selling my work, uh, which surprises me. I have a good situation at Renegers because I have a, a booth. It's not air conditioned in the summertime, mm. but, which was rough, but um, I love my, the other vendors. They're all doing primitive and antiques and vintage things. And there's a, a leather worker in me, and I sit there and demonstrate, and then I have one side set up, and I I really enjoy the people that come through. Um, 
So this is just a basic little piece, and then I put a, <laughs> I like to make lids, so I'm going to put a little gallery in it. <laughs> so a little gallery. gallery. <laughs> And I know I use the word just a lot. I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do that. It took me 30 years to just learn some yes. of those things. <laughs> so, and, you know, I treat things. I mean, there's a lady in Pennsylvania. She sells her miniatures for about $32 each. I sell mine for eight. Now. I, I'm, and I sell a ton of them. I really do. I mean, if I sold them for a dollar, I'd be a millionaire. But there's no way I'm making a million. You know, miniatures are a wonderful thing to sell. Number one, they're they're tedious kind of to make. I have to be in a good mood, but they don't take up much room. I glaze them with tweezers. I use tweezers in my glazing tongs. Um, I can get hundreds of them in the kiln if I so chose at, in one firing. So you know, if I got if I got a hundred and fifty of them in there and I sold them for eight dollars each. Who's a math person? How much oh, money? $1,200. $1, you know, it's so that's not bad. <laughs> I don't do that, but that's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so usually what I would use is I use a little propane torch and um, uh, to dry it. I, I usually would dry it up just a little bit, and I'd probably put little lug handles on there. I make a lot of uh, things that are typical of North Carolina. So I'm going to make a lid. So to make a lid, I just I just bring this in here, make my little knob. Oh, for Christ. <laughs> knob. And these can be fun. And this is another reason for it to have a private studio. <laughs> because trying to make these, you know, uh, you know, if you want to sit down and make 30 of them, um, it, they're a little tedious. <laughs> Um, I kind of messed it up. Let me fix it. Let me fix her. How big is it? So I've thanked a lot of people today, and, and I want to say thank you to people who came too, because it's very nice of you to come out in this COVID cold weather. Although I have to say, I looked in Sumterville, Florida, it's almost as cold as here, yeah. and it's raining. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so. And we haven't had a hurricane come through since I've been there, so who knows? Okay, knock wood, somebody. Yep. So normally, if I, you don't. Oh, oh, Alright, so you didn't measure anything, so if this lid fits. <laughs> How's that happen? Um, of course it will because you have a universal uh, diameter. You've talked about that before. Yes. Oh my yeah. Oh my yeah. God. It's a little small. It's a little small. Oh yeah. It's, okay. it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So from this, I, I cut off enough clay. So now I'm going to make a salter. Sell really well. They're fun and. Uh, and I'm sure there are other things with weight that you could put in them. Cinnamon sugar. Have sugar. you tried that? Um, I haven't. I haven't. I've just been, every time, which isn't often, I have, um, this one I'm making a little different. This one is just another technique. You go down to the bottom first. Some people find this a little easier. So instead of making the cone first, I'll just go all the way to the bottom, get that bottom defined with the clothespin. And then I'll make, I'll hold my left index finger on the inside, and I'll make the second hole right here. She says with these. Bring this up and in. Oh, the clays, I mean, the, this clay. I love BMX 5. It's a really nice clay. And then just put my little finger on the inside. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. It's lovely. Okay. So I know where it is. One of the things that I I had to teach myself after a while was how tall to make the little funnel in the middle, and how could I get it just the right size so that when you pick it up, 
it, the right amount comes out. So what I do, and, and I do this with a number of pieces, as I put my needle tool on the inside and I thin this. And I'll do that maybe a couple times. What I like about salters is they're unique. People like them. There are a lot of people who don't eat salt, but that's oh, okay. I don't worry too much about that. Um, but I try, I eyeball how big to make the hole. And there are some people who want me to make it for kosher salt, sea salt, things of that. Sea salt doesn't work real well in these. It's a little kind of gummy. People want me to make pepper shakers, and I tell them my technique of doing that is simply to make this, just like I do, and then to um, put a whole bunch of pepper in a bowl, put a little bit of salt in the bowl, use a, a spoon, mix it up, and spoon it in, which is tedious, but the little bit of salt will bring the pepper out. So then they buy a salter. <laughs> So this, I'll show you guys this. So this is about the size of wall. Is you gotta come up really high. You gotta come up high so that you don't end up with the wall closing right on top of there because no salt's gonna come out. Every once in a while, and when I sell a salter, I'll put salt in it for the person and, then, and I try it. Because I've had a couple duds, and I sometimes maybe a little bit of glaze got in there. I tell people never to wash, you know, don't dunk them in water, just wash the outside. If they happen to dunk them, like, you guys know the farmers, right? So Barbara, years ago, bought a salter for Joe. <laughs> she gave it to him and immediately just put it in water to wash it. And she came and she's like, what do I do? I said, put it in the oven, yeah. 250 for an hour. You know, it dries out, you know, so she, but you know, I have said, tell Joe not to do that again, you know? So, okay, so, and you just bring up the wall. This clay feels great. Does not feel like it has grog in it. It feels like it's straight B-mix. But B-mix is a luscious clay. It is a wonderful, wonderful clay. So then you just get this up. And then I go in and I just pull it out a little bit with my hand. These all sell wonderfully at Pottery Market, guys. <laughs> I don't know who all makes them. Anybody <laughs> around here make them? You make them? I don't make them. I made mine for Barbara Day. So they weren't a copy of it. Yeah. And then, um, so then, and I learned this in North Carolina to close it in. You know, I used to just collar it, but now I take and I put one finger on the inside and just close her up. <laughs> I like the back of my right thumbnail for little lines and things of that sort. Can, can we borrow it? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of mine look like nipples. You know, they look like breasts. I had somebody actually order two of them. Um, but you don't have to leave this little knob up here if you don't want to. Um, I just kind of play with it. Um, a lot of times I'll carve them because a lot of people will use them in the kitchen and maybe, you know, they got wet hands or something. I kind of like this little spiral on the top. Just clean her up. What I really like about these also is not only do they sell well and they're a unique kind of item, item but you cut under it, you leave it. You know, I trim them usually, I've gotten to the point now, this thing is you can cut under this and you can leave it for a week. You know, you don't have to. I do usually um, uh, trim them out. And then a lot of times, whoops, a lot of times I'll put like marks here. Wow. Because everybody's hand's a little different. So then when they go, when they go to, 
go to use it, you know, it's kind of nice. Here's that. Beautiful. Mm -hmm.